Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch from a family of timepieces launched in 2001, possibly the most revered 2000s-era Cartier model family by traditional mechanics watch connoisseurs. This is the Roadster and a large version of it in stainless steel and yellow gold. Inspired by vintage automobiles of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, it has a lot of automotive homage elements that we'll go over in a moment, but first, the size. Not including the crown and the crown plinth, this has a width from 9 to 3 of 37 millimeters. It's slim at 9.9 millimeters thick. The case is 44 millimeters lug to lug, but the solid end links of the bracelet stretch it a more substantial 52.8 millimeters across the wrist. Now we'll pop open this double deployant clasp and we'll throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. And you can appreciate that it's not an excessively large watch, even if the end link to end link distance across the wrist can sound a bit intimidating. Now the watch can also be thrown on a strap that Cartier can provide. So if you want to size it down and wear it on the strap, it would be suitable for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. As it is on the bracelet, I'm going to recommend it for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger. You can see that it is quite flat, so it'll fit underneath the cuff. And over the top, you can see that those end links are pushing out to the edge of my wrist, but they're not quite there, not quite yet. One more time down the barrel. Now we take a look at the bracelet. Now Cartier was ahead of the game, ahead of the whole industry really, with this notion that there could be a quick release system to rapidly swap between straps and bracelets, or straps and straps, or clean between the lugs. There is a little clip and you, you simply actuate the spring-loaded tab and it pops right out. This is one of the automotive-inspired elements here because it works pretty much exactly like an automotive seat belt buckle, including snapping right back in. No tools necessary, and you really can dress the watch up. A couple of different straps available even today from Cartier, plus you have the bracelet. Now, every single link on the bracelet has fixing screws, which means every single link on the bracelet is removable. You can see there are intermediate-sized links on both sides, so you have some fine-tuning capability here. The bracelet features a wonderful channel down the center. So you see, not only do we have differential link alignment and differential link material, but we have this channel down the center that gives the bracelet some depth. And then we have these pre-arced segments to make for utmost comfort and elegance on the wrist. We have here a double folding steel friction fit clasp, which is sufficient for protecting your watch during light sporting activities. If you want to really bash your watch, there's a G-Shock for that. Now we have elements that are automotive inspired, but above all, we have this tonneau profile, which dates back to the 1910s in the Cartier family. Cartier was building watches with tonneau profiles as early as 1906. So though this watch is inspired by mid 20th century automobiles, and it launched in 2001, there are elements that trace Cartier wristwatch design right back to its earliest years. Now you can see we have these recessed screws on the flanks of the lugs, almost like recessed or Frenched taillights on hot rods from the 50s. We have this Dagmar-like bumper overrider. It could be either a bullet taillight or as you saw on many cars in the 50s, the bumper overriders chromed and polished. Sometimes they were known as Dagmars. I'm not sure if we can still use that term for political reasons but that's what they were called in the day. There is a magnifying lens, almost like the lens of a light over the date, and you can see how the crown and crown guard structure integrate seamlessly into the a taper of that magnifier. Now we have a dial that's inspired by vintage automotive dashboard instruments, clocks, tachometers, speedometers, and you can see that it has a lot of traditional Cartier elements in two, including broadsword hands, we have a rosette stamped guilloche at center, we have a dropped center dial, we have have the radially arrayed Roman numerals, including a watchmaker's four and the Cartier secret signature at seven. And then we have a watch with two subsidiary setting modes. One is hacking seconds. The other is a quick set date mechanism. Now, we also have 100 meter water resistance. So this is a proper sports watch. You can see the lovely and evocative Roadster script on the back. The watch is loomed. We'll do a quick loom shot just to get a better 
grasp of how the watch looks in the dark loomed both hours and hands. Now the movement inside is a high grade ETA 2892A2 automatic winding with bi-directional winding action, 42 hour power reserve, 4 hertz beat rate, 21 joules, quite thin, very robust with hacking seconds and a quick set date and again protected down to 100 meters. When men who collect Cartier watches mention the reissues they would love to see, it's always the classics, the original Santos Dumont, the crash, a certain elements of the traditional Gerald Genta Pasha, but the watch that comes up most often is the Roadster. Built for only about a decade, discontinued, much loved, and highly collectible, this is one of the modern-day Cartier watches to own if you are a traditional mechanical horology fan. Reach out to Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.